Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. I'm here to do a demonstration of the use of the electrical branch as a threshold trigger. A few people have requested that I go into more detail on this because I use that term a lot. It's not really an official term from Rust, but I use it a lot in some of my videos where I do this. And there are some questions about how exactly that works and what some examples of how you would use that are. So the basics require understanding of the electrical branch enough to know that the electrical branch itself consumes one unit of power. So here I have a solar panel just directly wired in here, 20 units of power. It's got 19 left over. That's it. It's going to use one. So you've got 19 to work with here. When I hit the use key to configure it, it asks me how much amount of power do I want to branch off. This is the amount of power it's going to send down the branch output. And the key here is to know that the branch output always takes priority. So with 19 units of power, if I set this to 19, all of those 19 units go down the branch, nothing goes out the power output. Nothing is going to go out the power output until we get above 19 units of power in here after the one it's consuming. So 20 minus one is 19. That's what you have to work with. If I were to have 21 units of power coming in, that one unit of leftover power would then go out the power output. So that's the key to making this work. So in this example, I can set a threshold to turn something on by setting a threshold where there's one unit of power left. And that one unit of power left, because you've got 20 minus one, 18 goes here. The one left goes here, that turns on the display up there, and that could activate any number of things that you want to do. Um, it could turn on a switch, it could turn on a timer, or whatever. Uh, another example, which is sort of the inverse of that, is using that one unit of leftover power. I'll set it to uh, 18 again here, and there's still one unit of power left over, but that one leftover unit of power is activating the blocker. So in this case, we're using the threshold to turn something off rather than to turn something on. If I set this to 19 and there's no power left over, now it's actually turned this display on because there's not enough power to power the block pass-through handle, which means this is gonna let power through. This power here is coming in from an array of solar panels. So this is sort of my main base commodity power over here. So this is trying to get through. And as soon as we get uh, below our threshold, then there's uh, no power left to block and this comes on. That's how uh, you trigger lights at night, for example. As soon as your solar power dips too low, there's not enough left over from your configuration to block power and the lights would come on. And if I set this to 10, then you'd have to wait for the solar panel to get, uh, the sun to get lower and lower and lower so that there's only uh, 11 units of power here, the one for the branch, the 10 coming out, and then the lights would come on. So that's how you use it for a sunset sunrise threshold trigger is by determining what number here is uh, where you want your lights to turn on and setting that in your threshold or in your uh, configuration and that becomes a threshold for turning your lights on. Uh, turning lights on or turning them off uh, is all well and good or starting a timer is great, uh, but everybody wants to know how do I use this in a trap base. Well, you may have conditions in your trap base where you don't want uh, this pressure pad, for example, to work unless you have power at or above a certain threshold. Now you could say if I've got power running into this side of the end switch and if somebody steps on the pad, it lights up the other side and boom, your trap triggers. But what if you need um, a certain amount of power to run all your traps? Maybe you need 30 units of power to run all your traps. And so maybe you branch off of your wind or whatever that uh, 30 units and then you need enough left over here to tell it that 
you're ready to trigger this trap. If you fall below that threshold, like let's say your door is needed, uh, like our other example over here, 18 units of power, then that would be your threshold. And so you need 19 or above in order to turn on the AND switch so that this pressure pad will trigger your traps. Otherwise, if it's below that amount, if you needed 18 for your doors and you drop down to say um, 15, then you could put uh, a blocker in here to cut off this side so that the uh, pressure pad wouldn't work. Or if you only, in this scenario, this would work if something is above a threshold. So once you have over 20 units of power, uh, like once the sun has come up, let's say, and you're over 20 units of power, no longer power on this side of the end switch, so now the trap is turned off. So during the daytime, your trap is off. If you wanted it to be the opposite, you'd use this scenario, run this into your AND switch, and there you go. You could also substitute uh, this for an XOR switch, uh, which is a exclusive OR, and use it for triggering on a certain condition when you need both of these things, and if one goes away, it triggers the trap. So as soon as this drops below a threshold, it triggers the trap. So you can look at my component guide to uh, hear more about how the XOR switch works and so forth. But here's a couple examples of how setting the value here is used to trigger at what point power goes out of the power output. And that right now today is our only uh, power level based trigger that we have because display, uh, displays show you how much is going through uh, but they don't give you the ability to take any action based on that so they only tell you hey there's 57 power here great you can't do anything about it you can't set anything here to tell it do something at 57 units or 58 units of power but if you do that through here then you can use the leftover power as the trigger to tell you that you have gone above or below that 58 units of power. So uh, I know this got a little long-winded, but it seems like a topic that needed a little explanation. I hope you can find some creative ways to use uh, thresholds to trigger things above or below during the day or at night or when you've got extra power to do some nefarious stuff in your base. So good luck. Don't suck.